He is known for his role as a United States Army Air Forces General during World War II. He served as the Deputy Commander of the American-British-Dutch-Australian Command during the war with Japan. His name is George Howard Brett. In the annals of military history, one name stands out, George Howard Brett, a legendary figure who played a crucial role in shaping the outcome of World War II. Born in the United States, Brett's military career began in World War I, where he served as a staff officer. But it was during the second global conflict that he truly made his mark. In 1941, with the outbreak of war with Japan, Brett was appointed as deputy commander of the American-British-Dutch-Australian Command. This major allied command oversaw forces in Southeast Asia and the Southwest Pacific, demonstrating Brett's leadership capabilities even in the face of immense challenges. Later, he took charge of United States Army forces in Australia, before ultimately commanding all Allied air forces in the Southwest Pacific area. But it was in November 1942 that Brett's military prowess truly shone. He was appointed as the commander of the U.S. Caribbean Defense Command, where he remained for the duration of the war. This position was of utmost importance, as it involved defending the strategically vital Caribbean region from potential enemy attacks. Brett's unwavering dedication and strategic brilliance played a vital role in ensuring the safety and security of this crucial area. In the midst of World War II, General George Brett found himself facing a critical situation in Australia. As the commander of the United States Army forces in Australia, he received a warning from General George Marshall, the Chief of Staff, about an urgent request from General Douglas MacArthur. MacArthur needed a flight of long-range bombers to be sent to Mindanao, and Brett was tasked with finding the aircraft. Brett quickly realized that the only available bombers were the worn-out B-17s of the 19th Bombardment Group, which had seen extensive service in the Philippines and the Dutch East Indies campaigns. Determined to fulfill MacArthur's request, Brett approached Vice Admiral Herbert F. Leary, the commander of naval forces in the Anzac area, to ask for a loan of some newly arrived Navy B-17s. Unfortunately, Leary refused, leaving Brett with no other option. Undeterred, Brett made the risky decision to send four of the 19th Bombardment Group's old planes, despite their questionable condition. Only one of the planes, piloted by Lt. Harl Pease, managed to reach Mindanao. Two turned back due to engine trouble, and a fourth had to ditch in the sea. MacArthur was furious and sent a message to Marshall expressing his anger. However, the situation took a turn when a message from Washington, D.C. convinced Leary to release four new B-17s to Brett. These aircraft arrived in Mindanao on March 16, 1942, and successfully transported MacArthur and his party to safety in Australia. Despite the challenges, Pease miraculously made it back as well, carrying 16 refugees. It fell upon Brett to inform Prime Minister John Curtin of MacArthur's arrival. Although Curtin had not expected MacArthur's presence and had assumed that Brett would command American forces in Australia, he was persuaded to recommend MacArthur as the supreme commander of the Southwest Pacific area. While Brett maintained a friendly relationship with Curtin, he felt that the Prime Minister prioritized domestic concerns over the Japanese threat. Following a reorganization in April 1942, Brett became the commander of Allied Air Forces, Southwest Pacific Area, with his headquarters in Melbourne. One of MacArthur's first orders to Brett was to carry out a bombing mission to the Philippines. Despite Brett's concerns about the worn-out planes and tired crew, MacArthur insisted on the mission. Brett delegated the task to Brigadier General Ralph Royce, who led the mission and was subsequently awarded the Distinguished Service Cross by Brett. However, disagreements between MacArthur and Brett continued to arise. Eventually, on July 6, 1942, General Marshall offered MacArthur a replacement for Brett, either Major General George Kenney or Brigadier General Jimmy Doolittle. MacArthur chose Kenney, and Brett returned to the United States on August 4, 1942, flying in his B-17 nicknamed the Swoos. Just a day before his departure, MacArthur awarded Brett the Silver Star for his gallantry in action during air reconnaissance in the Southwest Pacific area. Do you want to explore more politician or military strategist? Who do you want to see featured next? Subscribe and leave a comment below to let me know. I'll see you in the next video.